Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. It's been an absolutely insane week for dinosaur news this week, with all sorts of interesting and potentially flame war starting things having been published. So let's get right into it. Starting off with something not so controversial, a new kind of nodosaurid ankylosaur has been named from Argentina. Named Patagopelta cristata, there's actually a really beautiful short animation that was made showing a reconstruction of this dinosaur in life, which I'd recommend going and watching. This animal comes from the late Cretaceous and is actually very small for an ankylosaur, at only around 2 meters in total body length, putting it at a similar size to the dwarf nodosaurid Struthiosaurus. Patagopelta is found to be most closely related to other nodosaurines of the so-called mid-Cretaceous of North America, suggesting that this animal was one of the nodosaurids that actually migrated into South America from the north during the Campanian stage of the Cretaceous, in an event they call the First American Biotic Interchange. So that's an absolutely wonderful new discovery, and the animation of this dinosaur in its life habitat is a brilliant way to introduce the world to a new kind of prehistoric animal. Next up, we've got the naming and description of a fascinating new kind of semi-aquatic dinosaur, and I'm not talking about Spinosaurus, yet. Named Natovenata polydontus, this dinosaur is a new kind of Hauschkaraptor rhindromiosaurid, the group of raptors that appear to have had semi-aquatic lifestyles and been adapted for swimming. Well, Natovenata certainly adds to the evidence of such a lifestyle, with a relatively complete skeleton of this animal discovered in Upper Cretaceous rocks in Mongolia, preserving some incredible details of its anatomy, which show some clear adaptations to a swimming and diving habit. One of these key features is the orientation of the ribs, which are notably pointed out to the sides of the body and backwards, as is the condition in modern diving birds. Plus, the overall rib cage is shown to be quite compressed from top to bottom, a condition also seen in aquatic reptiles. All this paints a picture of a very streamlined animal, and along with various other features of its anatomy, led the paleontologist to suggest Natovenator was a diving, swimming dromaeosaurid. Plus, I mean, just look at that skull, it's literally a prehistoric duck. Inferences were also made about Hauschkaraptor itself, with the paleontologists suggesting that it also would have had a streamlined body such as this. So this is a really remarkable discovery that tells us a lot more about these incredible dromaeosaurids. And finally, yes, there was also another Spinosaurus paper. We'll be covering this in much more detail in an upcoming episode of Boneheads, and having some spirited discussion I'm sure, so be sure to look out for that if you'd like to see me and other paleontology students look at this paper in much more detail. For now though, I'll just briefly explain what this new paper says. This research tests the aquatic pursuit predator lifestyle proposed by the Spinosaurus tail paper back in 2020 and further supported by the bone density paper published earlier this year by constructing a CT-based skeletal model of Spinosaurus and then creating a digital flesh model of the animal and performing various tests on its locomotion. The results of this are that Spinosaurus is found to be bipedal on land and also was incapable of diving in deep water. In fact, it was actually very unstable while swimming and very slow, restricted to the surface. The tail and back sails are proposed to be for terrestrial display instead, since these don't look like structures that would aid in swimming and evidence from the distribution of Spinosaurus fossils ranging far inland is also used. Spinosaurus is instead here reconstructed as a semi-aquatic ambush fish eater that would have visited the edges of waterways along the coast and inland. So, another very interesting paper that adds to the ongoing discussion of Spinosaurus, and again we'll be covering this in much more detail in a future episode of Boneheads, so do be sure to come and join us for that. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and I really hope you're looking forward to the next episode of Boneheads. We've got a very special one coming up as we recently attended TetsuCon and got interviews with many well-known paleontologists on a variety of topics, including Darren Naish, Dean Lomax, and Dave Hone. And we also visited the London Natural History Museum and recorded our time there. So we'll see you on Sunday for that.